What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapali here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas, and please join me as a new toy is being delivered right here to my office. There was a point in my life where I could barely afford a car. I mean, I go into a dealership and they tell me what the car payment was and basically what the down payment was, and I'd say whatever car you can sell me, I'd go in there and wait two hours to be approved for the loan. But anyway, these days you change your money game around, you increase your financial literacy, you start understanding the power of life insurance because actually that's how we purchase the car. I traded in my Rolls Royce that I purchased from a former NBA player. When he was downsizing, his lifestyle was downsizing after his career was done, I purchased his Rolls Royce and I traded it in for literally the same price I bought for two years ago to get this toy. And uh, I haven't seen it yet, so you and I can experience this together. So uh, let's roll. Right. Ah, suck it, suck it now. What's our receipt? That's my first time putting my eyes on it. Yes. <laughs> we did it. Sweet, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Like, up, I'm like that. <laughs> like finish line <laughs> to the tee. Man, to the tee. Like I pulled tea. up like a minute and a half. Ago. Really? Yes. Awesome. By the way, this is Rashid. Uh, talking about always being on your game, uh, Rashid, uh, we're sitting next to each other in an exit row in a Southwest Airlines first class. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just in the exit row. Right. And uh, the entire flight, you didn't talk to me. No. Nope. And then when I, we left the flight, we did we playing the flight, he approached me, he listen, man, I see that you like nice things. And I said, I do. He gave me his card. And I said, oh, you do uh, exotic cars. I said, I got a Rolls Royce. And that's why you always want to be on your game. And now, what, 90 days later? 90 days later. 90 days later, yeah. or, or some change. Yeah, I took your old one. Yeah. You said you wanted a new one. Yeah. Hey, that looks clean, man. Yes. The is floating this? are. Look, that's floating. Floating. So every time we move, this never moves. It's always going to be saying it's going to wave at people yeah. and say, all right. <laughs> so this was Chrome when you yeah. were showing it to me via yeah. FaceTime, and they, and they black. That's an easy fix. Remember you talking, man? Do I need to get new wheels? Yeah. I said, no. You do it all the time. Easy fix. Hey, this is the first time I'm seeing this too. So this is a. Uh, Hot tires, man. Yeah. So these are what are these? These are these are rental tires. These are brand new. Brand new, 100 percent So they just put the wheels on it. So I'll show you how we had to. So yeah. these guys, a lot of times dealers, they're gonna put fresh, nice new wheels on it to make it pop, make it sell quick. So brand new wheels, brand new tires, and then we asked them to change the color. <laughs> and they was like, man, let's do it. Well, so they almost we also got the uh, you see the brake calipers been painted, painted black too. Oh wow. So okay. it deletes the whole bag. Nice. Right? Look at that. You don't want this beautiful black wheel. You see that silver or gray yeah. brake pad, right? That's nice. So they painted that black as well. So all this okay. is chrome. All these horn handles. Yeah. Man, it's everything. all blacked out. All blacked out. And I like what, what we did here. Yeah. The little thing is on your old one. Uh -huh. Notice this is all black. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? Let's trim this out because it's going to be black and pop here. So you got this match. That. That's it. That's why we did it. That's nice. It's nice. Gotcha. They took care of the spirit of ecstasy. Really? Yeah. Here we go. We're dropping the top. Some game, how we got the how, the how we got the car. First of all, we got the car. We bought it under a business name. So if you're an entrepreneur out there, you got to set up a corporation. With LLC, S Corp, don't matter. LTV, don't matter. Set up a corporation. So if you're going to buy a car, buy it under the corporation's name. You take advantage of what they call Section 179, which is uh, depreciation and Trump during the Trump uh, Cut Jobs Act. Um, Trump Trump job Trump job TCGA Trump Cuts and Jobs Act. He allowed bonus depreciation uh, for vehicles over 6,000 pounds. So but behind me is another car we actually purchased, which is an SUV that we took advantage of because that car is over 6,000 pounds. This is not over 6,000 pounds, but we still bought under a business, so this is still, in essence, tax deductible. There's two ways you can do it. Either you deduct, the, if you have a lease, you lease a car, you can deduct the lease payment, or like what we did, we bought it, so we can write off the, the purchase price, and we can write off the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the miles and the car, car mileage, I think right now in 2022, it's like 55, 56 cents a mile. So if I'm driving this for business use, which is over 50% use of this, you know, 40% is for personal use, 60% is for business use, this can stay in the garage. That would not gonna be my daily. No. You know, it's not gonna be my daily car. Um, 
I can still benefit from the tax code. So, uh, furthermore, uh, we didn't go about and obtain, we're not paying interest to any bank. Why? Because years ago, I overfunded my life insurance policy uh, with cash. So I made money in cash. I didn't increase my expense. So this right here is an example of me delaying gratification three years ago, which is what a lot of people don't want to hear. Uh, I could have bought my dream car. I mean, we made a, we made a half million dollars a year in 2016, 2017. We delayed gratification. We shoved money inside our insurance policies for moments just like this. So uh, we, we had a little bit going back and forth, and uh, we secured the down payment. We secured the making sure because I was about to write on a credit card. He's like, the dealership's gonna charge you credit card fees. Yeah. I'm like, Matt, we're just gonna overnight a check. And uh, we've got money for my life insurance policies. And so instead of paying a bank, a, um, instead of paying a bank um, a monthly payment, we're paying back essentially our life insurance policy. So no interest flows in and out of any other bank but our own maximum funded life insurance policy. So this is something, some of the things I learned years ago. I said, one day, I'm gonna buy some of the best toys, but a lot of people want to get it now. A lot of, you know, Warren Buffett said something very profound. And Jeff Bezos was asking him, "How come more people don't listen to you, Warren Buffett, Mr. Oracle of Omaha? How come more people don't listen to you, Warren Buffett?" This is why, because I teach people how to get rich slow. Everybody wants to get rich quick right away. Everybody wants to raise a lot of money. I delayed. I was 42 years old before I owned my own pair of jeans. Wow. <laughs> wow. Everybody, my family got jeans. I grew up in the 90s watching Michael Jordan, but I waited till I was 42 years old, even for Jordans. So just that one value and principle of delayed gratification can allow time, money, and time, money, and value to grow for you in your process. So therefore, moments like this, buying a car like this, I mean, and it went back and forth through the negotiation, but we came down to saying, you know what, that's the one. I was able to be patient. I was probably pissing, I was probably pissing them off anyway <laughs> the negotiation process. But I said, let's make it the right one. And even in negotiation too, Rashid, right? They're the ones that came to me and said, no, let's make, let's make it happen. Can, can you explain that process? Let's make it happen. Yeah. So, you know, obviously there's some negotiations back and forth. And, you know, Matt wants what he wants. He knows what he wants. He knows, you know, he, there's value in that. So for me, the service that I provide is provide. I work for him, not the dealer. So I represent him in the transaction. So I'm telling him, this is what we need. This is what we do. And obviously being in the business for as many years as I have, I know what they can and cannot do to put deals together. So there was some back and forth. Everybody's in the business to earn a living. But at the same time, we have to take care of the customer so we can pass on more. So, to his question, the guys, we agreed upon a number, but Matt wasn't all the way satisfied, right? And if you know anything about Matt, he's a very particular guy, he wants what he wants, nothing's wrong with that. So I know the Mars app worked some things out, we had to move some things around to make the guys happy. So let's throw this stuff in to make happy, to make him happy, to make him completely satisfied, because guys like Matt, they want to win somewhere, right? Yeah. And so it's a dealership. So I made it to where both parties can win, we got everything thrown in, under where he could be happy. They had to make some concessions because they know this is not just a one-off deal. So I thought, based on my relationships, they were able to cut the cost to get everything in we wanted. Boom, deliver it, sound, boom, perfect. And that's why I prefer to go to a guy that knows it because, listen, Rashid met me on an airplane. And some of you guys are growing your business, you think that buying leads or even social media, it's about relationships. He met me in person. He had game talking to me in person. And 90 days later, he sells me a he sells me a Rolls Royce, which I wanted to buy. So he didn't sell somebody who just sells it. He sold something that I wanted to buy it, and he provided me the service, provided me the information, the education, um, gave him a couple options. Here's a, here's another thing too. When I was broke and I had no money, I'm in a dealership. I'm like dealership, please, please loan me some money, and they'll sell me whatever they want to sell me to their favor. I said that's the last time this is going to happen. So when you save money, you tuck money away, you allow delayed gratification to come in. I said, you know what? That's what she just mentioned. I want to get what I want. Why? Because I work hard for this. I save money for this. If there's a moment like this, that I want to be in control for once, to some extent, uh, it versus me being taken for uh, at a car dealership. And Rashid wasn't a sales. He's a, he wasn't a salesy guy. He was a guy that uh, said, you know what? Let me educate you. Let me show you your options. And he, I, I said, man, I found this myself though. I found myself. Yeah, but you don't know about this. Like I got sent my car. That was like fifty thousand dollars cheaper than this. Yeah. He goes, Matt. Here's what you. I said, I'm gonna go with the cheaper car. It's the same car, white, from Miami. It's 230 versus the, the price said, of it. Wait, let me do my research. So I did my research because what most people don't look for, the pitfalls of that I know the business. There's no way that this car, this year, this miles, should be this much significantly less yes. than the other that we're looking at. There's something wrong here, Matt. Yep. And what did I do? I said, this car's been in an accident, <laughs> frame damage. So, exactly. So I said, Salvage you can time. buy it if you want, <laughs> but I'm telling you up front. So yep. yeah, but those are the kind of things that we went back for. And we were even ready to walk away from this deal. Yep. I was ready to walk away from that relationship with those guys, because again, I work for him. 
we were able to walk away from that deal. We were about to walk away from this one until we got every single thing that we wanted, and he wanted it, and we are today. When you have savings, this is the thing they don't tell you about savings. When you have savings, you're calm. When you have savings, you're not impulsive. When you have savings, you can assess things and evaluate numbers and make sure it's the right deal for you. When you have savings, nobody pushes you. You're in control of the situation. So for those of you out there wondering how do I get game, first thing I would do is increase your cash flow, minimize your expenses, don't raise your expenses to raise your to meet your cash flow. That's what a lot of people do. That's why there's a report to see that more people live in uh, live in paycheck to paycheck in a hundred thousand dollar, two hundred fifty thousand dollar range. Yeah. But if you're able to increase your income, control that through entrepreneurship and minimize your expenses and not expense, not, not increase your sink. That's why Shaq said, I spend a million dollars in a day. I got a couple cars, everybody this, and a half a million dollars in tax they didn't account for. It's so easy to spend money. And so to make your, your money, have your cash, minimize your expenses at all costs, allow time, money, and value to double and compound for you over time in the right financial vehicle and you, some of the things that you've dreamed about. We just came back from Paris and Monaco. You, you, saw, the, you saw the IG clips, right? That's yes, a, I saw that. Paris and Monaco. Yes. And a week later, we come back, and this and this was already going in motion. Yes, it was already working. Yeah. Um, and I saw it, because I need to catch you a couple times. <laughs> and I said, whoa, he's living his best life. But you're working and, and partying. I mean, not partying, but sure. uh, leisure yeah. and pleasure all in once. And you were, I mean, you were, I'm sorry. You were working, business and pleasure, and I yep. saw you and I said, man, how can I get a cousin this guy? I gotta get this to him. Yep. So we emailed back and forth, but yes. We got, we, got, we got it done. So that's it, man. So uh, This is just a stepping stone to something else. So, I had the ghost, we got the dawn. What do you think is next? We gotta go culling. We gotta go, yeah. culling is next. <laughs> culling is next. But listen, delayed gratification, there's levels to this game. Because I wanna make sure I buy cars like this and it feels like a cheeseburger. Some people go out and buy cars and it's 50% of the paycheck. It turns into a burden. It turns, it turns into burden. You should enjoy stuff like this. If you don't enjoy stuff like this, then it becomes a burden. It's the wrong car to buy. So again, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but uh, it's a sad part about personal finance. Personal finance is more about handling emotions than really budgeting your expenses and income. So if you can handle your emotions, and uh, emotions, there's a spiritual aspect to it. There's a faith-based aspect to it. If you can trust, you can make the right moves, and God's going to open uh, doors for you. This stuff happens. So, Rashid, I'm gonna let my guys uh, sit in the car. Let's pull off. Wow.